Hi there, a virtual welcome to everyone. I'm Professor Malik Mike and Ismail of Computer Science. I'm going to tell you a little bit about you know my involvement in COVID modeling over the last year. Okay. And I'm going to put you right at the steering wheel of an important question that we faced. How many ventilators will we need? You know, and this is a question we faced approximately a year ago. Okay. And what I'm showing here in, in, in red dots are you know the number of infections in the capital district as we follow along day by day. And you see it almost got up to about 50 at the time we we're asking this question. And you might say, well, that's very little data. Yes. And the natural approach is, well, you know, COVID has been roaming around the world for some time now. You know, maybe we can use what's been going on you know, elsewhere in order to help us predict, you know, what will happen? How will these red dots grow in the future? What will the peak be? How many ventilators do we need? We're essentially trying to predict what's the infectious force of, you know, of, of COVID. Okay. Well, let's compare two different regions. For example, New York City and the Capital District. Okay. New York City, eight times the population, you know, much denser, different style of housing, apartments versus single family units. In an apartment, you come home, you're touching knobs, you're touching elevator buttons, and everyone has been touching these things. And the, inf the infection is going rampant. Okay. The punchline here is that you know, this infection is going to spread differently in different regions. Okay. And the capital district and New York City are going to behave very differently. And this means that you even if you know the infectious force in New York City, you don't know what it is in the, in, in the capital district. And that emphasizes that, you know, we're not interested in, you know, what we hypothesize ought to be based on what we see in other regions. We're interested in what does the data say, the local data, the data in the capital district. Okay. And when you look at that data, you understand that, oh, it's a very small amount of data. And it's very noisy data. Look at these points jumping up and down. Okay, so here's your task. Let's extrapolate. Okay. And, you know, we would probably agree with what the model says. If you follow these red dots and try to extrapolate, build a model of, you know, how the infections are going to grow, you'll get this dotted curve. And that's indeed what the models say. Okay. And let's see how good were the models. They were not very good because here's what happened. You know, at about this time, uh, we instituted a lockdown. And that just emphasizes that predicting human behavior, very tricky business. Okay, what we can do is we can account for human behavior in various scenarios. So if, you, if, if, the behavior, if the behavior was this, if you did this, then here's what would happen. If you did that, then here's what would happen. So sort of a scenario analysis. Okay, now nevertheless, these are the red dots that have happened. And we can analyze these red dots okay, and build a model of what's going on and try to predict what will happen in the future depending on human behavior using robust machine learning. So that techniques that are specifically designed to deal with a small amount of local data, you know, and very noisy data, and extract robust product, uh, uh, predictions that you, we have faith that, you know, they will likely come true. Okay. And when it comes to robust machine learning, the question that you really need to pin down is what can we learn? Okay. And the data places fundamental limits on what we can learn as opposed to what we would like to learn. And these techniques, you know, these are what our students learn in the, our machine learning courses, and the good news is that you can follow along on in online versions of these courses if you wish. Okay. Now, so that's the capital district. Can we go even smaller? Can we analyze a small closed system like Rensselaer itself, a, a group of students interacting together with staff and faculty and so on? Very nice closed uh, ecosystem of about 10,000 people. And indeed we can. Okay. And on the left, you know, if we, if we brought students back to campus at the beginning of the semester, okay, here's how infections would grow, total number of infections would grow, and that's with no testing. And, you know, if you instituted something like weekly testing and, you know, a, a limited amount, number of uh, social distancing protocols, you can bring this infection growth down drastically. This is just to show you how, you know, how important things like testing were and analyzing the effects of testing and how infections would grow when we were answering another important question around August last year, which is how do we bring the students safely back to campus? Testing was a very important factor in being able to do that. Okay, so that's about all I have to, to show you. You know, the, the sort of things we can do with robust uh, AI slash machine learning based modeling of you know, so let's say pandemic spread. And you know, I'm sure you're all anxious to know sort of what's been going on in the world with respect to, to COVID. And, and also uh, I'll leave you with some pictures of what's been going on in the rest of the world, starting with the capital district. So as you can see, we had our change points. Change points means lockdown, slow release, you know, uh, around September, students going back to school, the, the younger kids, you know, 
K to 12. And so that re resulted in this big wave and now that's subsiding and so on and so forth. Maybe we'll get another wave if people start behaving wildly after the, after the vaccinations are you know, administered, who knows? But the point is that robust machine learning can help us make sense of this you know, very noisy, very limited amount of data at the local county level okay? and uh, give us predictions that we can make decision, you know, that, that we can build our decision making on top of. Okay? And that's the capital district. Uh, this is New York City, you know, again, one wave, another wave. You know, this is New York State, okay. again, one wave, another wave. Okay. So here the behavior is quite you know, uh, well defined. You've got you know, change points with one wave and another wave. Okay. And here's Texas just for comparison. Texas, a state that has sort of opened up a little bit early. Okay. It's had you know, a wave, so this is sort of a wave and then another wave, a bunch of waves. Okay, and now this main wave that all of us seem to have experienced. Okay, this is the entire US. The entire US has lots of different things going on at lots of different times, kind of asynchronously. So you know, things are a little bit different. You know, lots of waves, lots of change points, much harder to analyze. And here's the whole world. Okay. And uh, just to show you that you know, we are able, using robust machine learning, to analyze this kind of local data. Thank you.